keeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. This year, our Advent season is the shortest possible. It's really only three weeks long because the last Sunday of Advent is also Christmas Eve. So it's just a short amount of time that we have. And so I want to encourage you to make the most of it these next few weeks, preparing our hearts for the coming of of Christ at Christmas. And over these next four Sundays today and the next three, I want to speak about just one topic and talk about a few different aspects of that topic. And the topic has a fancy name, and it's called the Incarnation. The Incarnation. Now, I hope you're familiar with that term, but if you're not, after four weeks, you you better be. (laughs) Um, The word Incarnation means God becoming man. Becoming man. That the second person of the Blessed Trinity took on our human nature He took a human body and a human soul, and we have a name for him. His name is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is both God and man, as we say in the Creed, truly God and truly man. And that is a really remarkable thing. That is one of the chief uh, teachings of our Christian faith, something that distinguishes us from all the other world religions, that we believe that God became man in the Incarnation. It's a really remarkable thing. And this is a great work. St. Alphonsus Liguori said, if God made a thousand other worlds, and each of those worlds was a thousand times greater and more beautiful than this world, it would still be nothing compared to the work of the Incarnation, because this surpasses every conceivable thing that could ever happen. What, What man has not even dreamed of, God has done. He has become one of us. And it's a really, really remarkable thing. But what I want to talk about today in the next three weeks is why. Why did God become man? And the Catechism gives us four reasons. I'm not going to ruin the excitement, so I'm just going to go one at a time each week. You have to come back the next three weeks to hear the other reasons. But the first reason um, that I want to share with you is that that Jesus became man for our sake so that we might become partakers of the divine nature. That comes from the second letter of Peter, chapter 1, verse 8. He said, we become partakers of the divine nature, sharers of God's own life. And that is truly a remarkable thing. And this is how the church fathers said it. They like, it's almost, it's almost like they overstated it. They said, God became man so that men can become God. Now, we don't become God like Jesus, but we become sharers. Or there's a a saying that I like, and maybe we can memorize, the Son of God became the Son of Man, so that the children of men might become the children of God. And how does this happen? Well, we are changed. That's how it happens. Imagine for a moment if you had a, a piece of iron, and you took that iron and put it into... Um, a fire, kind of like they do when they're blacksmithing, you know, you put that in there, you crank the heat up, and you pull that piece of iron out, it's now glowing red hot. It is still iron, it has th- that hasn't changed, but something new has been added to it, and that is heat. And it has taken on that quality of the heat. And that's what they say, this is what happens when God's life is, is impor- imparted to us, we become like glowing iron. And to keep it glowing, though, you have to keep it warm, right? You have to keep putting it back in the fire. And that's the same with us. We have to maintain this union with God if we are to um, continue this life that he gives us. There's fancy names for this. And I'm just going to tell you these fancy names. So that way, if you ever come across them, you'll know, ah, I know what that is. So one word is called uh, deification. Becoming godlike, because that's what we believe happens. The other one is divinization, which is the same. These are all synonyms. Divinization, becoming godlike. And the final one, it's really even more fancy because it's in Greek. It's called theosis. Theosis. Deification, divinization, theosis. But if we just remember that we become 
shares in God's own nature, like that iron taking on the qualities of, of fire. And so this doesn't just happen to every single person. It is a gift of God that we receive through the sacraments. In baptism, we became children of God. We received God's very life. That original sin that was part of our soul has been wiped away, and we have become like God, in a sense. And then that life of God is maintained in our soul, especially through the sacraments, through receiving Holy Communion, through participating in the forgiveness of our sins and the sacramental reconciliation, through our, our marriage, sacramental marriage, through confirmation. All these things, they give us God's divine life. And so we should strive to maintain this life in our soul. We also call it sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace, which makes our souls beautiful. One time, St. Catherine of Siena was granted a glimpse of what this soul looked like in the state of grace. And she said it was so beautiful that she would sacrifice her very life to preserve the grace in that soul. That's how beautiful our souls become when we have grace in our souls. And we can do this also by praying, by prayer in which we receive grace to do God's will, and of course, by living a moral life. So just to conclude, keep this brief, just want to keep those words in your mind. The incarnation, which means God becoming man, it's what, hap what Jesus did for us. And there's four reasons that it happened. And today, we are talking about how God became man to make us partakers of the divine nature. And so um, we should, this week, let's think about that gift, the great gift that he's given to us, and how we might live it out in a, in a more full way um, as we prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas.